Welcome back. Let's create a menu. Here we have a simple menu that presents some choices, in this case, a short list of shapes, to the user. It then gets a choice from the user and will respond appropriately, say, by trying a rectangle on the screen. It keeps repeating this until the user signals that she is done, in this case, by typing zero. Let's use what we've just learned about printf, scanf, ifs, and loops to do just that. Here we are in Eclipse. I'll start off by closing my project from last time. And then create a new project. So I right click and select New C Project. Remember, I want Hello World ANSI C Project. And I'll call the name for today just Menu. Click Finish. Take the project, go in the Source folder, and grab Menu.C. Add my name as the author and give a brief comment here saying what we're going to be doing. So this is an, an interactive menu to show output for various shapes. I'll start off by removing what's there. All right, I'll write a basic program. So what are we going to do? We're going to start off here by printing a prompt, getting input, and then what I'll do is display the output and say goodbye. Okay, so if I want to print a prompt, that's fairly straightforward. I'm going to use my printf statement. And it could be something as simple in the beginning as, please enter your choice. Now, getting input really takes, um, takes three lines of code, one to, to print it. The second is I want to flush the buffer. And I type in F flush standard out for the output buffer. And then I can get the input using a scanf statement. So I'm going to get from the user, in this case, just a single number. So I'll use a percent %d for an integer. And I'm going to need a variable called choice. I'm going to use the ampersand in front of that. That signals that the scanf function is going to be able to modify the value of that variable. And of course, I need to, to create that, that variable itself. So up here. I'll say int choice. It looks like it hasn't been indenting for me here, so I'm going to select this whole group of text. I'm holding down the shift key as I just arrow up and down. You could use your mouse if you wanted to. And if I press the tab key, that'll tab everything in so that we can tell that everything here is part of the main function. So I've got my input. Now I want to display the output. And once again, that's just going to be a printf statement where I'm going to say something as, as simple as you entered, and then the choice that, that they typed in. So percent %d again for the choice, and a new line to end it. And then I need to, to print out the actual the, the variable that I want printed. And that'll just be choice. If I want to say goodbye, that could be a separate print statement. So I'm going to say here, goodbye, with a new line. And since this is main, main returns an integer, I need to remember to return 0. All right. So again, so I have the standard format here of a printf, flush, and a scanf. And then I'm just printing out what, I, what the user typed in. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm pressing Control F11 to run. And it'll ask me how I want to run it. So I'll say a C, C++ application. This will down here in my console, it'll ask, please enter a choice. So I'll enter a choice of three, say. And it'll tell me that I entered three. I noticed I probably want a little bit of space here. So I'm going to go up back into my code and say, please enter your choice. Put a colon and a space there. And that should work a little bit more nicely. Now if I want to make it look like we, we saw a minute ago, I'm going to have to print out the actual menu. Again, so it's going to be some, some more printf statements here. So I might have 
a printf statement that says just menu. That'll be handy when um, when I'm going to be repeating this over and over again. It'll, it'll just make it stand out a little bit more. I'm going to put a new line at the end of that. And then I'm going to have a separate printf for each one of the um, menu options. So 0 is going to be to exit. And 1 will be to draw a rectangle. Remembering to put new lines at the end of all these. And 2 will be to draw a triangle. We could do a bunch more, but you get the idea. Right. So let's go ahead, and I'll run this again. Again, I'm, I'm pressing Control F11. So I see that it shows up here in my menu with my choices. And I can type in a choice. It tells me what I entered, and I'm at the end. So, so good, um, good so far. What's next is I want this to repeat indefinitely. And since I don't know how many times it should repeat, I'm going to go ahead and use a while loop. So I'll say while, and I really want this to happen infinitely. So I'll use one, which as you know, stands for true. So while true, and I'm going to want all this code here to show up inside the loop, except for the goodbye. I only need to say goodbye once. And I'll tab that in like I did before. Oops. And then once I've done that, I need to close up my loop with, with ending braces. So we can see that I've just put everything in inside that loop. And if I ran that now, it would keep asking me, um, it'd keep asking me what to do, but there wouldn't be any way to get out. Sent to my choice, 1, 2, 0. Tells me what I entered, but I can't get out. So I'm going to have to close the program, force it to close by hitting the little red square here to terminate it. And now what we need to do is to, to put in um, some conditions. Right? So once it tells me what I entered, I want to check. And I'll say if what they entered, if that choice is a 0, then I want to break out of my program. Now well, that's a nice enhancement. So if I run my program again, um, so it tells me what I do. But if I type in 0, then it not only tells me that, but then it, it just exits okay, and says goodbye. So that's great. Let's handle our other choices now. So if they entered 1 or 2, we want to handle that um, appropriately as well. So what we'll do is we'll use else statements. And we'll say if they didn't enter, enter 0, we're going to check to see if they entered one. So we'll check to see if the choice um, equals one. I'm going to use double equals to, to make sure that it's comparing one against the choice. And I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'll just, hey, if they typed in one, I'll say rectangle. And similarly, if the choice is equal to two, I'll print triangle. Run my program again. See this work? So if I type in 1, I can see it says rectangle. If I type in 2, it says triangle. If I type in 0, it says, or it just tells me that I enter 0 and, and exits. So to finish this up, it'd just be nice to have another condition in here where if they didn't type in 0, 1, or 2, I just print a message that says that what they typed in wasn't appropriate. So invalid input. We'll put that in there. And since we've handled every case now, we don't really need to display the, uh, the output anymore, what they entered. It'll just respond. So final run of the program. I'll give us more room here so we can, we can watch it. So if I type in 2, for instance, it says triangle. Type in 1. It says rectangle, and if I type in zero, it says goodbye. And with that, I'm Matt, and I'll say goodbye.